So today I got up at about 4.30 a.m. I hit the streets of Hanoi with this bad boy here, the Leica SL2S. This is new to me. I've been using this camera on and off for many years, but I recently just bought a used version. I finally own the camera. Love this camera. Excited about this camera. I'll do a whole separate episode about why I purchased this camera because if you guys follow me, you know that I'm a Leica M10D user. So I started a brand new conceptual street photography project. That's what I'll classify it as. I don't know if that's a genre, but let's call it a genre. And I started today, I'm gonna show you guys some BTS of me taking those pictures. I'll show you some of the pictures and tell you all about the project. And I'll talk just a little bit about my experience today using the SL2S for this project. So that's gonna be what this episode's all about, about the project. So this project has been sort of percolating in my mind for many years. I'd say about 10 years ago or maybe longer, I took this studio portrait of a friend of mine, he was wearing this suit, and I just had this idea of doing a shot of him with like a conical hat and not showing his face and just having the business suit. And I just remember the idea then, it was like I was doing all these business stories for the New York Times, for Bloomberg, for Wall Street Journal, about the emerging economy in Vietnam and capitalism and the economic boom here. And you know, as an assignment photographer here for like 20 years, I've seen this country change so much. And so that image has sort of lived in and out of my portfolio for many years, but I always liked it. There was something like conceptually interesting to me and I always wanted to do something more with it. And so I had this idea a couple years ago to like sort of have a muse or a subject or a model sort of dress the same way as my friend dressed put the conical hat on, hide their face, and sort of put them in different scenes of Vietnam, or go back and visit some of my favorite places in Vietnam, start here in Hanoi, and sort of see where that takes me as a photographer. So it's like, it goes against what I normally do in photography, which is just wait, watch, and capture, and, and not set things up. But I wanted to combine what I normally do, which is wait, watch, capture, but also inject a message in there and make it more personal. And so it's different, this is so different for me, but I like to explore things with my photography. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't, um, but it was exciting to start. And why the conical hat? Well, the conical hat is so symbolic of Vietnam. I mean, you see it everywhere. Whenever you see a picture, other countries do have them, yes, but whenever you see a picture of a conical hat, you think of Vietnam. And when I go back and look through my archive, and that's another part of this process too, it's interesting for me, because I'm putting together a book from my entire archive of assignments for almost two decades. And there's just so many conical hats in the shot. And a lot of people might think that's quite cliche, but they're everywhere, they're part of Vietnam. Rather than try to hide that, I've always leaned into it. And I've always loved conical hats. And one of the writers for the New York Times used to always tease me about conical hats. Like every time you show a conical hat, the editor for the Times loves it and they run that picture. And it was like, true, that definitely influenced me. Everywhere I went, from the city to the countryside. However, now in 2024, just being on Long Bean Bridge, you barely see conical hats, just to see them everywhere. So I thought it'd be fun to sort of have that be an element. The conical hat representing the old of Vietnam, the suit representing the business side of Vietnam, the development side of Vietnam, the economic growth of Vietnam, and sort of combining those two and just seeing where that takes. Got some shots today, got a good start. You know, along the bridge, we did not get a sunrise. We did get kicked off the middle, but I went back. Those shots didn't really work because they were very light dependent, but I do like some of these shots here. A couple shots with the street lights outlining the side of the face. I like this one more, a little bit pulled back where you just see a little bit less of the, the model there or the subject. This is probably more likely where I'll go where you don't see his face at all, just a shadow. So it was a semi-fruitful morning at Long Bean Bridge, um, but then we went to the market and that was a great place too, into this old school market. And around the market, there's places to eat. There's all these modern cafes and new restaurants and the younger generation is eating indoors, but Hanoi's has such a culture and such a history of eating outdoors, eating street food. People know Vietnam for its street food. So I did some shots here of a model having his morning breakfast, playing around with my 35 and my 50, getting a little bit close, pulling back a little bit. Uh, again, the light wasn't great, but it gave me some ideas. And then, yeah, I'm just letting situations happen. So these other people just came in, they were eating, and I photographed my subject here while he was eating. And that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for locations, passing through the market, passing by some of the fabrics here, Light was flat, but this is how I start to get ideas. If I had some nice light coming through there, these could be some interesting pictures. And then ended with a couple of these shots. It was these two chickens in here. One of the shots works as not part of the project, but I just kind of liked it. It was just kind of sad. So moving on to the market, after I got a couple of those chicken shots, I put our model in there. Didn't really work how I wanted to, but this is how I work. I experiment, I try, I come back and I look at stuff. And then I go back again and I analyze it. So I like some of the having pho for breakfast shots. The market shots were okay. 
And then this was probably my favorite shot of the day of just the staircase and I just had Beck walk through where I saw these little pockets of light. And I pulled back, I like the wide shot, but I think the tight one with just the hand, that little element of the hand passing through and the light hitting the conical hat kind of perfectly. I don't know, I just, that shot for me worked really well. This, if I can just get one per time I go out and shoot that makes the final project, I'm happy. And I think I got that today. This shot for me is probably the overall winner for the day. The shots on the bridge were okay, but I know I can do better. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do better. So that's the start of this project. Just a little bit of information on the Leica SL2S and my experience using it today. I've used this camera before. I obviously like the camera, that's why I bought it. I'm very happy with it. Everything I shot today was a pretty low light situation, some tough focusing situations with backlit motorbikes, shooting through some different layers of things, stuff that would be pretty hard to do with my M10D. And when I'm starting a new project like this, where it's very conceptual, I do need to see things in real time. And so to have the screen was very helpful today. I know that sounds stupid to some people, like of course you need a screen, but honestly, when I do documentary work, pure documentary, shadowing someone for several days, I like having the M10D for that, but this where I'm experimenting with autofocus, with in focus, with different lighting and just experimenting overall with my photography and trying to hit like a reset and try something new, it's really helpful to have a screen. So the performance in low light in this camera was exceptional. The magnification option for focus was just awesome to have. It really came in handy, especially like I said, in all those different tricky lighting situations. One knock on this camera, well two knocks is I don't need autofocus because I'm using it with M series lenses, so that doesn't bug me. However, I remember on the old firmware, you could use the little joystick here, which I love using, to just press and it would zoom in and you could check your focus. And now you can't do that. You have to, you have to map a different button. And that was my favorite button to do this with. So that's a bummer. I hope they bring that back. I think that was a big mistake. I can't be the only one complaining about this. And the other knock is the battery life kind of sucks. Uh, that's it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this episode. It's new to me. It's different. I like taking you guys out in the field. I hope you enjoyed that. Showing pictures. Anyway, open to your feedback, so let me know. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.